Hello everybody, this is Dee and welcome to my channel, Dee Plans and Budgets. I am so happy you've taken some time out of your day to spend with me. Alrighty, let's talk. I recorded the finishing of all my challenges for this month. Here's my box, pretty things inside. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of them in here because I finished all of these challenges, right? Dur During the recording, it was, <laughs> you know, let's be honest, it was a little bit of a hot mess. And then to wrap it all up, when I got done, I went to convert it on my phone and my memory was full. So I had to go in, I had to search through old videos. I found some old videos that were clear up, hidden in my memory somewhere deleted those, and then somehow deleted half of that video that I had recorded because I recorded it in two parts. So, you know, it was the last one of the month anyhow, and I have an extra video this week because of Jenny. So I am just going to publish this really quick. This is not going to be a savings challenge as far as completing challenges. What I'm going to go ahead and do with you is, is talk about the challenges that I am putting in this binder. This is my sinking funds month ahead binder. Talk about the challenges I put in here, a couple of changes going to that. And then I am going to uh, close out the video and show you how I close out my envelopes for my... Um, Sinking, or I'm sorry, for my variable expenses, how I close those out at the end of the month, then determine what, what carryover and such that I have. Okay, let's get going. First of all, this binder. Now, as you know, I have been picking challenges to equal at least exactly $760, so that at the end of the month, I know I have my sinking funds for next month saved. I was watching Jamie at Jamie R. in Budgets, and well, I mean, I watch her all the time, but I was specifically watching one of her debt-free Saturdays. And she talked about the fact that she empties this binder at the end of the month, whether she has finished the challenge or not. And then she just continues on the next month with that challenge. And I decided that would be an amazing thing to do because it does get a little boring. Like when I recorded this video, part of the reason it's such a mess is every challenge I'm finishing. And it just... I don't know. It's just not what I want to put out there in terms of content. And so I am going to be definitely finishing a bunch of these challenges, but I may finish them early in the month, or I may take the money out at the end of the month and carry it over. It's really important to me that I demonstrate that I take this money out because number one, for me, I'm saving this for next month's sinking funds and I need that money to put in there at the first of the month. The second thing is I think this is a tremendous way for people to work on paying off debt. Lady Di talks all the time about the dopamine hits we get when we complete savings challenges. I love that she's talking about this. Well, another time that we get dopamine hits is when we spend money. So when you are foregoing spending, you are actually foregoing some of the feel-good chemicals in your brain. That is why savings challenges work because you're going, well, I'm going to, I'm going to not stop and get that cup of coffee, but when I go home, I can put it in my savings challenge. You're re you're replacing those dopamine hits. And so it is far more fun to save for your debt by completing savings challenges and paying it off at the end of the month. It is just more fun to collect it through the month and then pay the payment at the end of the month than it is just to send a lump sum in. And I like that this binder shows you how to do that. I'm doing it to get a month ahead on sinking funds. It's a tremendous way to pay off debt. Anyhow, so I'm going to go through our savings challenges for next month, what we're going to have. And then I am going to put in the video of me closing out my binder. So first one is going to be Madeline Budgets. She had sent me a whole set of these and I'm going to continue $100 on this one. I may not finish it this month because now I don't need to. I can just finish where I left or continue where I left off the next month. I'm going to do the last one in this set from Jenny at Simply Living Saves. I really enjoy these. Girl Mama Budgets. She had a bunch of freebies and I went and got them and I am going to be completing these with you. This was one that was sent to me and I started a sent to me um, cover because then people that send me savings challenges, I'm able to feature them. And this is from Designs by NG Co. And I really like this one. It's really pretty. And it's a $60 challenge. Fits right into this binder. And then I have Hey K Budgets. I've been dying to do her avocados because I want to color the pits. I'm not going to do this as a no spend. I'm just going to do this a dollar avocado. I'm going to be doing a bunch of hers because I really like them. They'll fit really well into my mini ones. 
And from the lovely Lady Die Saves, this freebie from her. Go to her site, get it. This is adorable. It's so cute, the little birds. And then it has a little dot you can color in, just to my type of challenge. And from Amanda's Budget, another one in her series. I'm going to be doing the raindrops because April showers bring May flowers. And we all want flowers. And speaking of flowers, the Blessed Daisy Budget. I'm going to be doing two of hers. One is this one with the otter. And I am going to take off the zeros to make it just a $67 savings challenge instead of $175. And I'm also going to do one of her solo cup challenges because I have been really wanting to do that. Now, a change that I'm making is I'm going to put all of my challenges in the back. I, in the past, struggled with using challenges that I made because I had no way for you guys to get them. And sometimes that made me feel bad because I would get requests and I just didn't have a way to get those to people who wanted them. Then I opened my Etsy shop specifically so that when I used my challenges, if someone wanted them, they had an avenue to go get them. Then, for the last month, I've been struggling because I don't want to unduly influence people to buy product they can't afford, so I wasn't using some of my product. Well, that's just silly. I love using my stuff. That is why I create it. I don't actually create it because I want to um, sell on Etsy. Selling on Etsy is secondary to this challenge as a way for you to be able to get things you see. I love creating savings challenges. Some of them are extremely specific to me, like when I did my um, capping or packing to, to go in my minivan. So I would not put that on Etsy because that's really specific to me. But some other ones are super cute. I know, sorry, but I think they're super cute and I want to use them and I'm not going to deny myself using them. So what I'm going to do is put all of my savings challenges together at the end of this video. If you do not care for watching me stuff my challenges, if you are here because you like to watch and see other people's challenges, then you can just skip this part of the video, right? So I just, like I said, I don't want to be self-promoting and I don't, I absolutely don't want to uh, influence people to buy things they can't afford. So I'm just going to put all mine at the end here and I am going to do an older one that I did. And as I know you want one, it's a little puppy one. I'm just going to do these because I put the scratch off stickers on it, $30. Nice, short, easy one to do. I'm going to finally get to my gratitude uh, challenge that I uh, gave as a freebie at 1,300 subscribers, and I am going to be doing that with you. I'm going to be doing these two. I probably won't get them done in all in one month. Mine have scratch-off stickers. When you get them as a printable, they you would have to put the scratch-off stickers on them. I made these uh, to show people, and so I want to get them used. I don't want to waste this product. And I'm going to continue with one of my cow sets. And I love, absolutely love this one. It is my very favorite. I don't do the artwork, folks. I get it from Creative Fabrica. But I am going to do this one because I absolutely love it. I'm going to start with one of my Pigs on the Branch series. I made a one to three sided dice and I'm going to be rolling that for this one. I'm going to be using one of these that I made to match my dashboards. I just think it's pretty. I want to use it up. And I'm going to be starting this little monkey with all these twos on them equals, or twos and threes equals $250. I'm going to do this slowly over time which was one of the wonderful reasons um, or one of the wonderful things that allows to happen now that I'm not going to be forcing myself to finish every month. I'm also going to be doing one of my bee challenges because look at these cute little bees. They are so adorable and I want to use them. All right, I am going to stop this portion of the video and I am then going to add in and close out and such with you on the video where I close out my binder and show you what I do for the month. All right, now again, I am sorry if you tuned in to watch a savings challenge video and I completely understand if you just wanna tune out, but if you hang around, I think you might get some really useful information. Part of the reason I wanted to share this with you today is I am an absolute firm believer of tracking. It is absolutely necessary if you want to keep your budget under control. Just putting uh, money into an envelope isn't going to do it. Yes, if you stop spending when the envelope is empty, it's going to keep you from going over budget, but it's not going to let you know what your spending habits are. Tracking is key. I probably go a little overboard on tracking because I personally love to track things. I love to log things. I love to track things. I love to make a list and mark them off. I am just weird that way. I'm a budget nerd for sure. And so therefore, you know, I might do a little more than necessary, but I did want to share with you what I do 
to make sure that everything is accounted for in my budget because I keep an annual record of this so that when I start my budget next year, I can go back and I can tell you exactly what I spent on groceries each month. I can tell you exactly what I spent on gas. Then I can see if my uh, spending is going up or down so that I can know what I need to budget for the next year. And that's incredibly important to me. What I do at the end of the month, and for me, the end of the month is after my credit card cuts. So it's the 27th. My credit card will cut today. I'm not making a purchase today, so I'm able to close it out. This is going to allow me to go in, pay off that credit card today, any balance before the statements even due. And I could do it before or after the statement cuts before it's due. And I still wouldn't incur interest as long as I paid it in full. But if I do it before the statement cuts, it doesn't show up on my credit report as owing anything. So that is why I like to, to close it out the morning of you know, the last day of my statement's going to cut, and then I pay it off. And here's a trick that most people don't know. My statement's going to cut today. I'm going to close everything out. Should I need to make a purchase? It's not going to process it until tonight. Might be a few cases where that would be different, but in almost all cases, it won't process until tonight. Therefore, it would show up as next month's expense anyhow. All right, so what I do as... I share when I talk about my tracking is I go through and this little box right here means this has been reconciled with my bank account, which means I have checked either Chase or my bank account to make sure this is cleared. Sometimes they're debits, sometimes they're um, credit cards, and sometimes it's cash. The little thing here means I spent cash on it, right? That way I know, and I'll tell you why I do that, I know the money's not going to be here in my envelopes. So I go through and for instance, here I broke it down. I should have $197 in here in my spent and prop, I should have $70.51. It's not going to be in here at all because it's already cash that went out. And then I should have $216 in cash in my spent envelope. So I go back to here. Let's count my prop money first. Now I know I'm going to have a deficit because I went negative in my gas money. It's a sinking fund, so that's fine. I'll put the money in there next month. So this isn't going to balance. 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 1, 10, 25, 30, 5, 40, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I am exactly $43 short, which I should be because I had $10 left in my thing. I brought that into here. But then I, it was, and remember, it was the oil change, the fiasco with that oil change. So... No worries there. I am balanced. I know everything is accounted for in my budget. Next, the, the cash that I spent and what this is, I'm sorry, this is not cash I spent. The cash that I unstuffed. This is because I stuffed this binder with real cash. Everything but gas money is stuffed with real cash. I don't always spend the cash. Sometimes I spend it on my credit card and pay it back. Not all places that I shop would take cash, right? Like Amazon's not going to take my cash. Anyhow, but I need to reconcile. So I need to make sure that I accounted for every one of these dollars. When I spent, I took it out of the envelope. And so 50, 70, 90, 110, 130, 150, 170, 80, 92, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. This money goes back to the bank. This money just goes back in my drawer. That is my prop bank, a drawer Oop, right over there. This money is going to go back to the bank because I need it to pay my credit card. Alrighty, now I do that same process with all of my binders and these binders are all in prop money. So I will just go through here. This is my sinking funds. This is where I kept my spent money from my sinking funds. My total here says $992.66 I should have in here. Let's count this to make sure it equals what it's supposed to. One, two, three, four, sorry, I don't have any sort book on, five, 56, 57, 58, 59, 50, 70, 80, 92, and 93. 992, 66, 993. I can feel confident that I got everything that I spent on here. And I do make mistakes because, I, yep, pinch me, I hurt, I am human. Alrighty, so that takes care of my sinking funds binder. And then the next one is my low priority sinking funds with this cute little Grinchy prop money. 
in here, I should have $250.97. One, two, 50, and one. And this will go into my prop money, right? Because this is all in prop money. This all gets paid by credit card and repaid. There, now you can see how I make sure that everything is balanced and everything is accounted for. This stays in this book. I also do an electronic copy. As I go tiny, I'm probably gonna have to convert more things to electronic simply for space. Now, I won't make you sit through the whole process that I do, but many of you know that whatever don't spend on variable goes into my low priority um, sinking funds. And I care, I put some money in there each month and that's for my necessity low priorities. So that would be things, clothes, gifts, mini emergency. I, I have an amount of money that I transfer every month because I know I need funds in those accounts. The, the money that I do not spend in my variable categories, that also goes into my low priority sinking funds, but that funds all these little fun things like buying stuff on Etsy when I don't really need it, getting a subscription I don't really need, a catch-all, which is usually like the casino or a extra excursion or something on a trip, spending extra time out with friends, maybe going on a weekend trip with them, and a new category, which is extra money for travel and vacations, and Amazon, nothing that I need, just that I want. So it is really motivating for me to really watch my spending in these categories because this money that's left over, it just is all fun. What I do, I go through and I have 141, or I should have 141 left, 20, 40, 60, 81, 10, 25, 35, 40, and 141. I go in here and I do just a close out and now I am at zero in my groceries. So when I step next month, I have that in there. I will not make you sit through every one of these. I'll do one more with you just so you can, you can see. Eating out, I spent only $10, so I should have um, 40 left. 10, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40. Excellent. Close out, 40, I have zero left. This money just goes directly into a little binder I keep for stuffing the next month. And this is all gonna get stuffed into my low priority sinking funds. And it's already in change and everything works out splendidly. So this is the process I do for each and every one of these envelopes. When I get back here to my cash, this is not accounted anywhere in my budget. Once I've gone to the bank for my $200, that money would go in here. And then any leftover nice money, I'm going to exchange and put in here so I can keep that in my savings challenges. The rest of this money goes into a binder and savings challenges that I don't do on this channel. Um, and that is unaccounted money that I can spend. My walking around money, I do not count. It is the only money in my budget that I do not track. I use about... 60 to 90 dollars a month on savings challenges and then the rest of it I just keep some in my purse and if I want to stop and get a I'd say a cup of coffee but I don't get coffee out but a coke maybe when I get a coke then I spend that right or if I want to buy another stupid pin that I don't need did I say stupid pin if I want to buy another wonderful marvelous pin that I don't need I can use that walking around money right therefore when this money is not spent and it goes into that extra little binder this is money that I can spend anytime. A lot of the time this goes for extra casino money um, because my variable spending goes to a lot of categories, as you saw, the leftover variable. And so a lot of times this is casino money. It's kind of, you know, I didn't spend it in one stupid way so I can spend it in another stupid way, right? So this money gets emptied out. I'm going to leave it here for now because I haven't gone to the bank to get my $200 cash. So I'm going to leave it here for now, and when I get that cash, I will do that exchange. So I am not done with this binder. I will finish it up. So I, I just wanted to let you know that. On my sinking funds and my low-priority sinking funds, these get carried over. That's why I use prop money, because the balances get large, and this money is in the bank in a separate account, which I pay the credit card out of. There you go. A little bit of what I do with my budget to take care of you know, making sure everything balances. Let me bust in before I close out this video. Look at that stack of cash. 
All right, now let me share with you that this month I had $464 left over from my variable expenses that will go into my low priority sinking funds. On a normal month, this would not make me happy. And I know everybody's like, what? That's so weird. Why would you not be happy to have so much left money left over? And the reason being is I didn't spend money in categories that I stuff because they have to do with the quality of my life. Those would be categories like taking monthly trips in my van, buying crafting supplies, which makes me happy, spending time with people, uh, eating out occasionally. I didn't spend in those categories, and I actually want to be spending in those categories each month. Now, this month, that doesn't make me unhappy. Number one, I didn't spend my monthly traveling money because I took my big trip to uh, Oklahoma and I funded that out of, out of my other travel. So the having all that money left over, I give myself $100 a month, does not mean that I didn't travel this month. It just means I didn't do like a weekend trip to a state park. The other area I didn't spend all my money in was crafting supplies. I made my no spend. Yes, 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 yes. And it was a goal of mine to do my no spend because this girl does not need another pen, right? So I am happy about that. I would usually be a little upset that I didn't spend uh, enough money in my social, but I had family here at the first Monday of the month and then I was sick and then I was in Oklahoma. So I actually only went to two social events and I just didn't spend any money because I didn't need to. I usually buy a soda in the place we go play pool, but I just wasn't thirsty for soda. I really wanted water. So I left a couple dollar tip out of my walking around money and had water. And then I go play trivia as well. And the counter attendant was so inept that I couldn't even get a soda for the night. So didn't support that business at all. But it doesn't mean that I didn't go to social activities when I had the chance. It just means that I, you know, I had other things in life. And lastly, eating out. I did get pizza when I wanted to. Again, sick, traveling, all that kind of stuff. It was just lack of opportunity, not lack of me doing things. I Part of the reason that I started cash budgeting was to make sure that I allow myself to spend. So if I am taking care of all the necessities in my life and I have an emergency fund and I prepared for medical expenses, what is left I can spend. I have taken care of future D. I need to take care of present D. So if I am having money left over because I have not done things because I didn't want to spend money, that is not a good thing. I want to spend these funds. I put money in there to enjoy my life, right? But this month, all is good because this does not represent a denial in uh, opportunity that was passed by. This just represents that I didn't have opportunity. Now I have all this extra money. I am going on a cruise in a few weeks. I am going on a cruise with my granddaughter in a few weeks. And that means I can spoil her with some of this money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me close this video out. I'll just do it now instead of zooming you back to the other one. And I want to say thank you for each and every one of you who stopped by today. I know this is a different video. If you hung out with me, I hope you got valuable information. If you are so inclined, like, subscribe, share, comment, all of those wonderful things. If you prefer to be a silent uh, supporter and just watch, and, and I just really appreciate your support in that way as well. Until the next one, everybody. Bye.